Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is The Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hey, Cat, first weekend hey. out. How'd that go for yeah. the love letters? I'm recovering from the first yes. weekend of love letters. Yes, you are. And of course, you know, we uh, we uh, take in risers and make a pop-up theater out of the event center space. And so we packed in our risers, which are solid plywood and pallets, you know. Oh, so cool. Just a touch sore. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, we opened to a sold-out house on Friday, and we actually had, like, a decent crowd for Super Bowl Sunday, which, if you're involved in theater in any capacity around here, like, having people just show up on Super Bowl Sunday feels like a win sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's going splendidly. Mike and Lori are just absolutely enchanting as those two characters, and it's such a sweet story, so... Yep, and then one more well. weekend we'll be talking about, it, but one more weekend coming yeah, up, right? Yeah, yep, last think, weekend yeah. coming up. So, yeah, no, it was Beautiful. good. It was good. How about you and Junior? How was Super Bowl? Well, it was okay, but it was, it's, it's weird. This is it'll probably be one of the most controversial Super Bowls because mm-hmm. old school rules, the Niners would have won the minute they got the ball out of the overtime and they scored a kick. That would have been mm-hmm. the end of the game back in the day. Mm-hmm. But okay. now they okay. give them overtime, they give them a full quarter. I mean, they give them a full, you know, they give them I see. like 10 minutes, whatever. They give them the full quarter, I think, uh, actually. And so okay. Kansas City was able to get the ball back. And, of course, then they did something with it. So <laughs> there I you see. go. And they knocked it out. But like I said, a lot of people were like going, hey, what happened? You know, what the rules, you know, were changed. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, they changed that. And they even announced it before they did it and everything like that. But. Bummer, because the Niners did have a brief second. It was nice. And they did run the game pretty much, you know, the the whole thing. But, yeah, towards the end, it wasn't what was happening. But yeah, yeah. you know what? And it was kind of like a non-scoring game. So it was like kind of a – wasn't that exciting. I mean, the, really? some of the playoff games are more exciting than that one was, <laughs> when the Super Bowl was, you know. And then, yeah. yeah. And then I saw a bunch of stuff on Facebook today about, yeah, the halftime thing. And it was like – yeah, it wasn't really a big thing, you know. The commercials were cool, though. <laughs> okay. I love the Arnold Schwarzenegger one they got with the street for him. That was classic. <laughs> Neighbor. <laughs> I love it. It was good. But, yeah, that's how we did this weekend. Hung out and was cool and just, uh, yeah, did the Super Bowl thing. And we, we had fun. And, uh, and that was it right there. And then that's what mattered, right? We had a good time. So, yeah. yeah. I always do. You know, like I said, I don't. Mm-hmm. it don't matter. It's just a game. But, you know, it would have been nice, but it is what it is. So, you know, mm-hmm. so there you go. We'll see what happens next year. So absolutely, as long as teams stick together, they can do something. But it's when they start splitting apart and everything after they've been working with each other, that's where you lose it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you watch the ones that are staying together are the ones that get up there to the playoffs and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. So that was our thrilling one. I hope everybody had a good Super Bowl out there and had fun, a safe one, and got out and did something this weekend because got all kinds of stuff going on still. I mean, busy year, and we got a bunch to talk about here. And uh, before we get going, I'd like to thank Trike City's Dispensary, the Oregon South Coast Fisherman, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, all you got to do is go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. And of course, we've got our favorite castaway here with us, <laughs> Oregon South Coast Fisherman, Mr. Dave Keene is here. With the fishing report, what's going on out there on our beautiful, the ocean's looking nice. Yes, it is. In <laughs> fact, it was, I was close to being on a boat today. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be on one tomorrow, so okay. we'll, we'll be able to get out because it's been far and few cool. between when we could get out there in the ocean because it's been so rough. Oh, it's been so, crazy, yeah. One of these days, I'll be calling you for, on a Monday and we'll ship to shore kind of, yeah, kind yeah. of the report the again. It's yeah. fun, fun to do that. <laughs> Early fun. Beautiful. Well, let's see. The update, uh, we have ocean. When you can get out in the ocean, like tomorrow when I go out there, we'll be bottom fishing, which is your five rock fish and two ling cod. Okay. We've talked about that before. You cannot keep, keep a cabas on yet, not till July 1st. Some people that don't know that do can f- face a stiff ticket when they bring one in yeah. because it's yeah. not legal right now. Uh, but uh, we'll be bottom fishing tomorrow, and you can go crabbing. So I have a friend out there now. I saw his boat uh, out there as I was coming over here. He's out there pulling his pots so that you can crab. Oh, okay. Okay. That's going on. Uh, let's see. Halibut. I went to a halibut. I was online meeting with ODFW just a couple nights ago. Uh, tentative season for 2024 halibut is is set. Uh, it has to be finalized by the ODFW in April. But what it looks like for us 
is the same quota as last year, 8,000 pounds, starting May 1st. And uh, instead of one fish per day bag limit, they're going to increase it to two fish per day bag limit. So I think that's a plus and minus. We may hit our quota quicker that way, which then could shut us down sooner. So we'll have to kind of see how that all plays out. Although when you, it's often hard to get two fit, two halibut. I mean, when you get one, you rejoice because oh, there are right? far and few between. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not like going bottom fishing where that's, you know, nonstop usually. So, but it's fun. So we're, so May 1st will be the opener, 8,000 pounds, our quota again, which is good. And so, uh, but salmon, oh boy, I'm hearing some bad news about our salmon. Uh-oh. I know we didn't have a season this year in the ocean for Chinook and I'd be very surprised if we have any Chinook season this summer uh, in the ocean. Fingers crossed, of course. I'll be going to the Ocean Salmon Industry Group meeting called OSIG uh, in two weeks. We'll be up in Newport, and then they'll reveal numbers of salmon along our coast and what the possible seasons may be, whether it's uh, Chinook or Coho or both. Right. So after that meeting, I'll be more than happy, to, of course, to come back and report back to you and the and the gang out there, and what the salmon season may look like. But right on. Hope, and, hope it's going to work. Right now, though, we're in the Steelhead uh, Broodstock collection, so the Checo River is kicking out some steelhead uh, to the plunkers, which are the bank fishermen. Now that the waters drop, we'll be able to get, we're able to get a lot of boats to, out there now drift fishing. There's right. probably 50, 60 or more boats today on the river uh, with their clients, often are their, their uh, customers for uh, charter guys, but a lot of our private boat op- operators are out there as well and we're trying to gather brood stock uh s- steelhead brood stock to take them to the hatchery to spawn them bring the adults back and then later on bring the smolt and put them back in the system it's all about fish giving the giving them an us and commercial opportunity to catch fish right on so that's what we're doing off your back patio there yeah. i have i've <laughs> caught one i've got actually caught one steelhead off that right. off my patio but it's a little high water lately and i know i noticed i missed a uh a, phone call i might have to get a fish right after our meeting oh uh, so i might be late to line dance and you better cover for me <laughs> with my wife you know what that gets me yeah out. yeah i think i might be getting a fish here in just a Did moment <laughs> yeah well that's my report well, i'm uh, sticking to it better not mess up this week is valentine's week so oh, yeah that's right better yeah. show up yeah no pressure <laughs> oh, no pressure oh, thank you for that reminder remember i'll write it down <laughs> yeah Right on. Yeah, it'll be Valentine's Day when you hear this. So if you're hearing this and you're late, you better get out there and get on it yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the date. So, yeah, very cool. Well, hey, is there a meeting coming up? Oh, that's right. Uh, we have a meeting next Wednesday, a week from this okay, Wednesday. there you go. And it is at 5.30 p.m. Okay. at the Chetco Library. We have a guest speaker, Madison Vargas. She's an Oregon State University graduate student. And her thesis project is on black rockfish. So she's coming down to talk to our group and recruit us into collecting black rockfish carcasses for her study. Oh, thank you for asking like, about Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a like big you thing. to get that out there. Yeah. Yep, that's yep, cool. yep. Well, Appreciate right. that. So we'll be helping happened. her out on that. Next Wednesday oh, then. Yeah. Yep, and next Wednesday the 21st. All right. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Well, good. Always glad to have you on board here. And uh, yeah, get out there and have I'll be fishing tomorrow there and you know right. and have some fun. Yeah. I said you a picture. Yeah, there you Hopefully. go. <laughs> yeah, we all I always see it on Facebook. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, well thanks, Kat. Thanks, Bruce. Very bad. Take care. Well, always cool to have Dave on board and telling us all about the fishing report and everything. It's a, kind of a bummer about the salmon thing. I'm hoping before the slam and salmon comes, we got something action going on out there for the people. It always feels so tenuous these days, you know? <laughs> it's just like, I guess that's just the way it goes now. Yeah. Yeah, with the fishing. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, we might as well just hop right into the music schedule and get this stuff going. Absolutely. So coming up at Misty Mountain Brewing, they have music from 6 to 8 p.m. On the 16th, Lon Goddard will be playing. And then on the 23rd, it'll be P.A. and T. Roy. That's right. And Cisco and Daltrey, we're doing a Cisco solos going on at the 17th and the 24th at the Brookings Harbor Farmers Market, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then we have some personal dates here for Lon Goddard. He's playing on the 21st at Kuntai. That's from 6 to 8. And then on the 17th, he's at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant playing from 6 to 8. P.A. and T. Roy are playing on the 23rd at Misty Mountain Brewing from 6 to 8. Hey, Mike Powell on the 16th. He'll be at Checo Brewing Company, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then at the Inateca down in Crescent City on the 24th, the Shark Tones will be playing from 8 to 10. They will. And the Italian guys on the 16th and 23rd, they'll be at Kuntai, 6 p.m. 
And then Danielle Duran and Ohana on Tuesdays had Oxenfree. They have an open mic night from 8 to 11. And then on Thursdays, they're over at Checo Brewing Co. with an open mic event there from 5 to 8. Yeah, and then Elk Valley Casino, the Betty Green Center, on the 17th, they feature comedian Tom Rhodes. Opening act is Michael Cordova. Doors open 7.30, shows at 8. On the 24th, they've got The Unchained, a tribute to Van Halen. The doors open 7 p.m., shows at 8. And in the Warriors Bar and Grill on the 14th, Valentine's Day, they've got Steve Berg from 6 to 9. On the 16th and 17th, it'll be Jesse Mead from 7 to 10. And on the 23rd and the 24th, we got Steve Nelson, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Rounding out the music schedule here, the Shark Tones are playing again on the 24th at Inateca. Music there running 8 to 10 p.m. Belleza, the Checo Medical and Aesthetics, located at 97825 Shopping Center Lane, is presenting a Love Yourself event. This is happening on the 16th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Be education, free consults, and event-only pricing. So that's going on Belleza. All right. Or Belleza. Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah. All right. All right. And hey, there is a Valentine's Day dinner happening at the Brookings Elks Lodge on the 14th. They ask that you reserve your time of choice at 4 o'clock, 5.30, or 7. Of course, this will be airing on the day of the event, but doesn't hurt to reach out and see if there are spots left. It's going to be a five-course meal prepared by Chef James. Filet of shrimp, scampi or scallops, chicken cordon bleu, pasta primavera, super salad, and dessert, all for $42. To make reservations, you can call Cheryl at 541-469-2169. Yeah, they'll probably slide you on in. It's still early enough. Yeah. Hey, check your activity center, Valentine's Day fundraiser. Take out only lamb dinner for two. This is happening on the 14th. Pick up between 1230 and 2 p.m. Featuring roast lamb, scallop potatoes, vegetable, and dessert. Limited quantity, so make sure to reserve by Tuesday. But once again, 541-469-6822. They might have some extras and all that good stuff. Yeah. So it never hurts to check it out. Sure thing. Well, hey, now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Hey, yeah, hey, here we go. We got a few quotes from President George Washington. He was born on February 22nd, 1732. He says, observe good faith and justice toward all nations. Cultivate peace and harmony with all. He says, it's better to offer no excuse than a bad one. I like that. Liberty, when it begins to take root, is a plant of rapid growth. And then last but not least, he says, it is far better to be alone than to be in bad company. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Hope you enjoyed these week's quotes from George Washington with Cousin Bruce. Till next week. Have a great one. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of like that. Yeah, yeah no, I can, I can get behind that for sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, guess what? Three Penny Theater Co. is proudly presenting just one more weekend of Love Letters by A.R. Gurney. Where is this happening at? The Brookings Event Center. That's at 800 Checo Avenue, Unit B in Brookings. And again, one weekend left on the 16th, 17th, and 18th. Friday and Saturday, the show starts at 7. The Sunday matinee starts at 2 p.m. Doors open 30 minutes before showtime. When Andrew Makepeace Ladd III accepts an invitation to Melissa Gardner's birthday party and Melissa writes a thank you note in return, a romantic friendship and correspondence destined to last for almost half a century is born. Both from affluent East Coast families, Melissa has more money, but Andy has better parents. The friends communicate with each other through angst-ridden boarding school experiences, European adventures, failed marriages, and the ups and downs of career. Despite the painful differences, which will ultimately tear them apart, They remain each other's most trusted confidants and are true lovers on paper, if not on the earth. Starring local veteran actors Lori Pepsis and Mike Vest, directed by Three Penny founder Jason Liddell, tickets are $15 and Three Penny offers discounts for seniors, students, and veterans. And if you need something to round out your Valentine's Day week, they're also offering date night packages for two, featuring shareable, sweet, and sparkling treats. Date night packages are limited and available while supplies last, so it's recommended you book those tickets early. And you can learn more about the show and buy tickets in advance at threepennytheater.com by calling 541-251-0640 or by emailing contact at threepennytheater.com. See, all you lovers out there can do a double take. You can have Valentine's Day on Valentine's Day and have it on the weekend. At a or make up for time if you uh, or make somehow up time forgot. You did, yeah, I'd be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> like Mr. Dave almost did. Whoops, is that He's right? had yeah. a makeup period here, people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, there's some shows going on, too. You can see Love Letters and also the Perkins Harbor High School drama class is presenting The Internet is Distract. Oh, Look a Kitten by Ewan McWethy. 
Come watch as Micah battles the internet as it tries to distract her from the world. She only has 45 minutes to finish her paper on The Great Gatsby. She just needs to check a few facts on the internet first. Unfortunately, the web is a nefariously wacky place where boxing cats, Russian spies, and competitive streaming services threaten to take over Micah's schoolwork. Or worse. This production opens on February 16th and runs through the weekend of February 24th at the Brookings Harbor School Auditorium. Showtimes are Fridays, 7 p.m., Saturdays, 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. No shows on Sundays. Tickets are available at the Brookings Harbor High School office. $12 for adults and $10 for students. So there you go. You can double the pleasure, double the fun, man. There you go. Sounds cute, cute, cute. All right. And the Del Norte Association for Cultural Awareness is presenting Twin Flames. This is happening at the Betty Green Event Center at the Elk Valley Casino. This is on the 16th at 6 p.m. Danaka invites you to get ready to ignite sparks and witness the magic of love with Twin Flames, a musical combination of indigenous and Western melodies. For the fourth concert of their 2023-2024 performance series, they're delighted to host award-winning duo Twin Flames, who creates sonic soundscapes using indigenous spirit flutes, traditional drums, and Western instruments. The result is a warm, perfect blend of sounds. Twin Flames offers a memorable show with their blend of music, comedy, and thought-provoking stories. Tickets are available online at denaka.eventbrite.com, as well as at Del Norte Office Supply in Crescent City. Any remaining tickets will also be available at the door. Box office opens at 5.45 p.m. The doors to the auditorium open at 6. Yep, and the Curry Public Library District, located at 94341 3rd Street in Gold Beach, has some February events going on. They got the Friends of Curry Public Library Book and Bake Sale happening on the 16th, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Friends members only, it says. You can join at sale for $10 a year. Saturday on the 17th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And Sunday the 18th, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Then Monday on the 19th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., they got a $2 bag sale. Then they've got a Design Your Dragon happening on the 24th. This is from 10 a.m. to noon. Explore the process of designing and printing an articulated 3D dragon. Follow-up sessions to create your own dragon will be available. You can RSVP at www.currypubliclibrary.org slash event slash design your dragon. These are ages teen and adult. Set your phone for easy use here on the 27th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn how to use accessibility features to make using your phone easier. This program will cover how to control your phone with your voice. Have your phone read the screen to you, adjust text size and appearance, screen magnification, and a whole lot more. So there you go. What's going on at the Curry Public Library? Yeah. And at the Brookings Harbor High School cafeteria this weekend, it'll be the 17th annual Winter Art and Chocolate Festival. And this is on the 17th and 18th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., 17 years and running. The Winter Art and Chocolate Festival brings together local and regional artists, chocolate makers, and the great citizens of Southern Oregon for one of the area's most tempting festivals. Yeah, they do one up on Grants Pass, too, so he hits mm-hmm. both areas, but that's very, it's a big popular thing, that's for sure. Hey, Lucky 7 Casino is presenting Dylan Schneider. This is happening on the 18th at 8 p.m. A live performance by country singer and songwriter Dylan Schneider at the Lucky 7 Casino and Hotel. Doors open at 7 p.m. and the show begins at 8. Tickets are available at www.eventbrite.com or at the door. And, of course, it's a casino, so you got to be 21 or older to attend this event. All right. And the Brookings Emblem Club, number 265, is having their annual Americanism breakfast at the Brookings Elks Lodge. This is going to happen on February 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. It says the public is invited to come out and join in their community event. That's all I got on it, yeah. But that Americanism, there's that word again. <laughs> hey, Tortuga Mexican Restaurant, located at 28788 Creek Loop in Gold Beach, is presenting the solo acoustic rock artist Ghost of Brian Craig. This is happening on 23rd, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. They highly recommend reservations by calling 541-701-9502. Very cool. All right. And in a couple of weeks here, the Checo Pelican Players, located at 1240 Checo Avenue in Brookings, are going to be presenting Death Takes a Holiday, directed by Christina Rushton, assistant directed by Stephen Rushton. Set in the early 1930s Italy as Death, the Loneliest of Souls, suspends his usual business to explore the mysteries of mortality, hoping to learn why it is that men fear him. Posing as handsome Prince Sirki, he arrives at Duke Lambert's Italian villa to spend time with the Duke and his guests and for the first time, glimpses the joys and heartbreaks of mortal life. Although attracted to the mysterious prince, the guests shy away from him, sensing his true nature. But Grazia, the beautiful young woman who the duke thought was to marry his son, falls for the handsome stranger. 
Will Her Love Prevail Over Death? This is running for just two weekends here, February 23rd through March 3rd, Fridays and Saturdays at 7.30, Sundays at 2 p.m. Tickets are $15 for adults, $7 for students, and there are three ways to get tickets. You can visit checkopp.booktix.com. You can call them at 541-469-1857 or get your tickets at the door. Doors open 45 minutes before the start of each show. Yeah, and Elk Valley Casinos present Nun Chain, the Van Halen Tribute at the Betty Green Center on the 24th, 8 p.m. Tickets are on sale at etix.com and the casino. Doors open at 7 p.m. and the show starts at 8. And, of course, the casino so you got to be 21 or older to attend. And then there's a Let's Dance event happening on Sunday the 25th. There's going to be bolero lessons from 1 to 2 p.m., Open dance from 2 to 3 p.m. Dance music features ballroom, Latin, swing, and lessons are by Carol and Amy. This is happening at the Checo Grange, and it is a $7 suggested donation, though they say it's free for teens. Yeah, so put on your red shoes and dance the night away. Yeah. Let's dance. Oh, yeah. Hey, Brickings Harbor Garden Club is presenting first annual Scion Day and grafting demonstration. This is presented by John Savage, and it's at the Checo Community Library. It's happening on the 26th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. It's open to the public from beginner to experienced. All are welcome. Don't have scions? Come see what they are starting anyway. Come learn about grafting. Please participate by bringing scions of healthy fruit trees such as apple, pear, or cherry, any fruit tree. Bring gallon Ziploc bags, tape, and a permanent marker. And then please contact John, it says, if you need to know how to harvest your scions to bring to the class. And he will instruct you via email at John S-A-V at charter.net. He also says sharpen up your grafting knife and create your own Franken tree. So yeah. there we go, Franken tree. Wow. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yes. now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. Good day, cat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know the KGB was sent to kill actor John Wayne? It's true. Here's the story. John Wayne's power as a virulent anti-communist combined with the cinematic stardom apparently got under the skin of Joseph Stalin, the premier of the Soviet Union. So Joseph Stalin decided to try to assassinate John Wayne. In 1949, the FBI caught wind of the Soviet plot to kill Wayne and came to L.A. to inform him. Well, when Wayne found out, he did something that only John Wayne would have ever done. When Wayne was informed about the Soviet agents dispatched to kill him, Rather than to go into hiding, he hatched a plot with the FBI agents and a scriptwriter, James Grant, to kidnap the assassins instead before they had a chance to execute their plan. Well, the KGB agents made their way to Wayne's office under their prepared identities as FBI agents, but found Wayne and the real FBI waiting for them instead. Wayne and the FBI then took the Soviet agents off to an abandoned beach and staged a classic intimidation technique on them, a mock execution. It may be harsh, But the Soviet agents themselves were trying to stage a real execution of Wayne instead. So fair is fair, after all. And at any rate, at this point, the assassins were handed over to the FBI and were apparently so intimidated by both Wayne and by the prospect of returning to the Soviet Union having failed that they turned informants for the FBI instead. Stalin died in 1953, and his successor, Nikita Khrushchev, met privately with John Wayne in 1958 and informed him that the orders had been rescinded. Waynes told his friends that Khrushchev called Stalin's last years his mad years and apologized. I hope you enjoyed this week's bit of Weird History of the Yours Truly Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. Yeah, he pulled the John Wayne, man. That's what he did. I mean... (laughs) Good luck. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I... You know, I actually saw that on Mysteries at the Museum, you know, mm-hmm. one of those shows. They they talked about how he did that. And, you know, they never let it go out public, though, until later on. You know, right. got out. Wayne never talked about it or said anything more about it. Probably didn't want to get anybody else uh, yeah. thinking about, yeah, you know, we could probably get him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, imagine that. That is crazy. All right. <laughs> that was definitely a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, the Curry Public Library up in Gold Beach is hosting a monthly event called Memory Cafe Curry. It meets the third Wednesday of every month from 10.30 a.m. to noon, again at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. 
To register for this program, you can email memorycafe at cplib.net, or you can call them at 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss as well as their care partners. Care partners may include but are not limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their similar situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. The VFW Legacy Brooks Fundraiser PSA. VFW Post is raising money to fix its building, upgrade its heating, electricity, and improve the landscape. They have raised approximately 30000 but they need 20000 more to complete the work. They're selling legacy bricks, featuring messages of memory to veterans respected by their loved ones. Each brick will cost the donor 100 bucks, and every purchased brick will be laid professionally in front of the post for everyone to observe. They will also conduct yard sales, provide meals for a nominal donation, and sponsor other groups and their activities to raise these funds. Once the building is completed, the VFW Post-1966 will serve the veterans in the community of Brookings. So you can check them out. The Veterans Post 966 is located at 507 Pacific Avenue in Brookings. And that's it. So time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I want to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report at kciw.org. And while you're there, check out the live streaming as well. Well, hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off, so keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get out there. And hey, we'll, we'll see, see you out there. there. Bam! Bam. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.